From the campus studios of Saarland University, this is Ropecast, a lighthearted podcast for learners of English, with Roger Charlton and Peter Tisha. Hi, thanks for downloading and listening to Ropecast. This is Peter Tischer, and again, I am without Roger Charlton because I want to talk some more about education, and for that reason, I invited Christoph Klein back into the show. Hello, Ropecasters. And uh, I would suggest today that instead of talking about general education systems, we talk about a typical school day in Great Britain. Oh, yes, that's what we were finishing with last time. Right. And uh, what I would like to do, actually, is maybe compare, because you know what? I went to junior high school in 7th and 8th grade in the U.S., in New Jersey. And maybe we can see whether the U.S. system is somewhat similar to the U.K. system. I would guess it is in, in some respects and might differ in others. Yeah, okay. Well, we'll see. First things first. Let me start, okay? Yeah. Um, school in the U.S., at least for me, started at 9 o'clock in the morning. And we didn't go right straight to class. We had to go to something that was called homeroom. And this is where all uh, students had uh, to assemble. There was a sort of a roll call, uh, meaning that uh, our names were ticked off on a list. And only after that could we go to the individual classes. Is that the same in the Great Britain? That's very similar, yes. They have, uh, well, at our school we started at 8.30 uh -huh. with the so-called registration time. Pupils would gather in one classroom mm -hmm. and their form tutor would basically mark absences, yeah. Ah, uh, okay, right. And then you'd go to class? Not immediately. What do you mean, not immediately? Um, you could go to the bathroom first? N no, you couldn't. <laughs> it would have been a major issue to go to the bathroom in that time. Uh -huh. After the registration was taken, uh -huh. which lasted about 10 to 15 minutes, mm -hmm. all forms would gather in a big assembly hall. Uh, every day? Every day. Oh, my God. And then what? Either the headmaster or the principal, as they would call it in the U.S., uh -huh. um, or one of the senior teachers would give a speech to the school. Would that look like in a Harry Potter movie? Yes, exactly that way. <laughs> every morning? Every morning. And what would he speak about every morning? It could be current topics addressed. It could be that he was talking about performances in school. You mean uh, like the school play? School play, sports events. Uh -huh, um, okay. Or he would address the pupils about discipline matters, for example, if uh, something was not satisfying. Ah, okay, okay. So he'd, he'd give his, uh, I don't know, 10-minute daily talk or 10 minutes? Yeah. Yeah, uh-huh, uh-huh. And you were not allowed to speak, probably? No, <laughs> not at all. And then student, the students went back to... To their to, classes, where they started with normal subject teaching at uh, about five past nine. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's... We started... We didn't have any of those assemblies. However, something else we did in the homerooms, we would have the Pledge of Allegiance. You know what, what that is? What's that? No. The Pledge of Allegiance is... Uh, well, a pledge is when you, you swear you, that you will do something. Mm -hmm. And in that case, you swore that you would be faithful to the United States of America. And in order to do that, you pledged your allegiance to the flag, which usually stood in one quarter of the room. You would face it, you would put your fist on your heart and say, I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Oh, my. <laughs> I said that every morning, even being a German. I was so scared to stand out in the crowd. I said it anyway. <laughs> That's <Okay>. strange. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we would have a um, one of the assemblies per week would be a, a religious ah, okay. <laughs> thing where a priest would be uh, giving a speech. But uh, we didn't have any of that. Well, then you said prayers, at least. <laughs> the Pledge of Allegiance sounds a little bit like a prayer. Okay, but then everybody went to classes. Uh, one difference with Germany, however, was that instead of students waiting in their respective classrooms for their teachers to come, it would go the other way around. Whole classes, or forms in the British English, would change rooms. Yeah, that is exactly the same in Britain, yeah. Ah. So there were corridors with science rooms, others for languages, and every student had to go to their respective class where the teacher was waiting for them. Okay, so that's the same. Of course, you'd have breaks. 
Yeah. In between classes? Yeah. How long? Five minutes usually. Mm -hmm. uh, and after period two, there was a, a breakfast pause, which lasted mm -hmm. about 30 minutes. Okay. And then you would get 10 after the next two periods. Yeah. Yeah. We had a, a breakfast break as well, which we had to spend in, in, the, in the playground. At noon, we would have also a lunch break which you would have to spend in the cafeteria. You had a cafeteria as well? I yeah. mean, it was a boarding school. Yeah, of course, um, a large canteen that was actually the same as the school assembly hall uh -huh. and a large kitchen facility next to it where two chefs work in either the, the lunch or the evening shift mm -hmm. uh, alternating. Mm -hmm. Now, in American English, a chef sounds like a very, very good cook. Uh, is yeah, that the same? They were actually cooking quite good. Uh, considered it was a canteen facility, it was uh, uh, amazingly good. Okay. We may have to explain the uh, term chef to our listeners a little bit because that's a false friend with German. Uh, folks, a chef always cooks. The, it's not a boss. It's not the head of a company. Um, so a chef is always a cook and usually a good cook. And you had good cooks. We usually only had stuff delivered from the outside. It wasn't very good. And you could bring in your own lunch, with, which is what a lot of the students did, actually. And then in the U.S., we had, I don't know, three periods in the afternoon. So school was out at three. Mm -hmm. Was that the same with you? That's similar for us. It was three periods as well, but a bit longer. Uh, school ended at 4.15. Ooh. That's long. Yeah. Okay. But then school day wasn't finished yet. Oh, my God. No, I went home at three. No. After these three periods, um, they actually had to do obligatory afternoon activities three times a week at least. Oh, my God. Uh-huh. Well, you have that in the U.S. They're called extracurricular activities where you could stay in school to do these, but none of them uh, were, were obligatory, as you say. Well... It's probably due to the fact that um, the school is a boarding school and they would uh -huh. not burden the house parents with having a hundred kids run around the house for several hours in the afternoon. Uh -huh. So they had to sign up for certain activities. Okay, yeah, mine was not a boarding school. Uh, it, it was just a regular school where you went in the morning and had to go uh, home from in the afternoon. And what kind of activities did your students engage in? There were many, many things from the normal sports activities, ranging from hockey, uh, mm -hmm. football or soccer to rugby, and even less common sports like karate, for example, was offered. Whoa, classy. Uh -huh. And of course, there were school plays rehearsed during that time or mm -hmm. uh, music mm -hmm. instruction going on. Mm -hmm. And there was um, a thing called the cadet forces. Huh? Yeah, students actually had the chance to get a basic military training in that time that would allow an easier entrance into a military career later on. So what did that include? Jumping over hurdles and hiding yourself and, and shooting and, and, and I don't know. Uh, well, all of, <laughs> all of that could, uh, could be part of that. Um, oh. Usually it involved marching around uh, <laughs> um, to get a military drill, you could say. Ooh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, that that sounds hard, but in a way, it's it's a, also kind of classy because you know cadet schools, and that sounds like uh, it's sort of a high class school. It was, yeah. People there were quite well off, you could say. Aha! Uh -huh. I think I want to learn more about just how well off they were in our next podcast. Would that be okay with you? Gonna come, be... come back, tell me something about the the rich folks. Yeah, of course. Uh -huh, because my, the folks in my school weren't that rich. so. And I hope you'll join us out there uh, and download the next podcast, dear listeners, when we will talk about that. And maybe we will even learn how to get into that school without paying too much money. <laughs> Christoph even was paid for going there, but of course he was a, an assistant teacher. But for now, I would like to say goodbye and have a nice day. You've been listening to Ropecast. Brought to you by Saarland University, featuring Roger Charlton and Peter Tischer. Tune in for the next edifying episode on your podcast dial.